Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. No BS today. Nothing but stuff on the Forest Fen treasure. And we'll do that on the next Men Are So Smart. Well, hello there, and welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. How you doing, Ronnie? I'm good. Thanks. Good. Yeah. Uh, our in interest is still at a peaked level on the Fen Treasure, and today an article we found uh, X marks the spot. If you're hunting for forest fens buried treasure, you may want to start here. Uh, of course, a best-selling book in America is The Thrill of the Chase. An episodic memoir self-published by a white-haired retiree in Santa Fe. And um, it's an article called Start Here. Last summer, he says, he profiled Forrest Fenn, the author of The Thrill of the Chase, who walked him through his decision to secret a chest of gold, jewels, and precious artifacts into the mountains north of Santa Fe. He peppered his memoir with clues to the location, including coded directions, in a 24-line poem that ends, So hear me all, and listen good. Your effort will be worth the cold. If you are brave and in the wood, I give you title to the gold. Wow, nice. Um, uh, it goes on to say, in our, but in our days of conversation, he ine inevitably shared a few more, passing along unpublished uh, autobiographical uh, autobiographical writings, old newspaper clippings, and copies of prior self-published books, all of which contain personal elements. He also introduced his family uh, toward the, this writer around the gallery and taught him to dig at the historic Pueblo he owns outside town. Uh, he buttressed all this with more than a dozen interviews of my own tracking down some of Fenn's old friends and business partners former members of law enforcement, and churning through hundreds of far-flung documents, press clips, old books, and federal records. We mentioned this in a prior episode that, yes, your Uncle Sam, and I don't mean the one across the street who smokes cigars and drinks cheap <laughs> beer. He was on the story as well, Uncle Sam. Pursuing Fenn as a person of interest in a multi-state investigation into grave robbing and artifact theft in the Southwest. They raided Fenn's house in 2009, and as I mentioned, the case remains open today, according to the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office in Albuquerque. After his piece, this, this author was published, dubbing Fenn the real Indiana Jones, nice hat, dude, <laughs> After uh, the KG collector says he turned down a string of broadcast hits, and soon enough his book faded until recently. Uh, so when this article was published, Fenn had just appeared on the Today Show and NBC Nightly News, touting the treasure hunt and reigniting the search for his gold. The appearance set off a Fenn frenzy, so to speak, mm -hmm. uh, crashing his personal website in creating a run on his book, which until, until now had been a kind of a marginalized curiosity sold through a single independent bookstore in Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. uh, as of now, Amazon listed one copy left for sale for $45. I think we actually found it to be a little bit more than that. Mm -hmm. um, and the other sites advertised used volumes for three times as much. I don't understand that. Yeah, me neither. Or unless uh, they're making crib notes. Right. Yeah, exactly. If they've got some uh, clues in there. Mm -hmm. Fenn himself has gone back for a new printing. Actually, the last time I looked, I think it's in its 10th edition. Holy cow. Yeah. That's a lot of books. Yep. All right. Uh, so first, a disclaimer, the author says, Fenn is a hard man to know. How hard? Well, his wife of more than half a century says, not even she knows him. Not really. And Fenn says, heck, I don't even know myself. <laughs> He was born in Central Texas. He doesn't know how his father ended up in Texas or who the first Fenn in America was or even where the name Fenn comes from. 
it's Irish or Scottish or something, he said. That kind of narrows it down. In our conversation, the author said, he seemed to like his lack of history. <laughs> it seemed to set him free to create himself, which he does in the thrill of the chase. Uh, his, uh, this memoir, this book, is a uh, is drifty, disorganized thing. One imagines him dropping off the pages uh, on the way to the printer, I losing a this. few... Losing a few in the wind and binding the rest in whatever uh, order he picked yeah, them up. Mensa, mensa. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. What makes this treasure scheme so exciting and so uh, unnerving for some is the figure of Fenn himself, a man who may be America's last great collector, an amateur digger, and self-taught everything. Smarter than the average archaeologist, savvier than a rude, tough raider, uh, tomb raider, and more aggressive than both. When you read the book, read the first half of The Thrill of the Chase closely. Here's why. It covers the childhood through college years, the era when Fenn became Fenn. That's important because Fenn really is a sentimental guy and told the author he hid the treasure in a place that Fenn has known for years. Hmm. Uh, he goes on to describe a string of small places in the book. As a boy, he lived in a wood-framed house with a cow in the back and freshly shot bird for dinner. Hmm. Yum, yum. Yes. And, uh, and homemade soap for the bath. At night during the warm months, he slept with his pillow on the open window sill, breathing in cotton seed from the mill and listening to the, uh, for the mail train. Sometimes he snuck out to watch the gypsies down by the tracks or walk through the cemetery and sit on a grave. Wow. Most revealing in the first half of the book, the way Fenn conducts himself. He spent his boyhood learning where the edge is. That sounds familiar. Mm. As he writes, defying his father and relying on only himself, he scavenged the local dump, built a bike, and sold it to one of the kids in the big brick houses. He also started collecting things. He filled a whole room in the barn with magazines. Uh, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, comic books as well. And built a ball of string too wide for his own bedroom door. <laughs> it's, it's the largest ball of string in the world. There is a place, I can't remember. We were, I know. We were driving back to Arkansas. I think we were on Highway 40. And there is a road sign that says largest ball of string next exit. Boy, to we have that it. kind of time in life. We missed it. Yeah, we didn't get there. Uh, so the two points combined, the rebelliousness and the love of antiquities, antiquities. Uh, point toward a hiding place on public land where the ground is lumpy with centuries of human debris. Thrill of Chase is about giving a hands-on experience of the public at large you could say Fenn's whole life is about that ethos. He built the thrill into his gallery, housing 19th century landscape paintings priced higher than some state lotto jackpots, and his home, where this author ran his fingers over the lip of a six perfect pre-Columbian pots and fell the point of an 800-year-old needle and a mescal knife for eating cactus. Ah, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, please touch, he said emph emphatically. I am responsible. Hmm. Yes. Uh, one night led some people to court and others to jail because of a complicated gesture. Fenn says he went into the mountains north of Santa Fe. He apparently didn't go far, and the conditions were not that extreme. People who go looking for the treasure should not search where a 79 or 80-year-old man could not take it, Fenn told the author. He and his wife have driven to Montana through Colorado and Wyoming in the last few years. And another friend of Fenn's, the writer Douglas Preston, recalls hearing Fenn talk about northern Arizona. In choosing the location, Fenn himself told him he was thinking 10,000 years down the road. I considered mudslides, forest fires, earthquakes and floods. And yet, he maintains that the treasure is readily accessible to him even today and Fenn says, I could go right there, right now. Hmm. Uh, so one of the problems is that uh, 
the title of the land, who owns the land where Fan hid the treasure. Not Fan, or so he tells this author. He won't confirm that it's on federal land. Too big of a clue, he says, but he feels uh, darn entitled to use such land as he pleases, no matter how sacred the ground. I own the government, he told me. I am a taxpayer. Well, we own the government, too. Dang. I never thought of about it like that. Yeah. Why do they keep taking my money if I own them? <laughs> I'd like to figure that out. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. But if Fenn hid the chest on government land, it could be a felony to remove it. Since everything on government land, by definition, belongs to the country, to all taxpayers, not just a brazen fellow hoping to play finders keepers. And if Fenn hid the box on private land, well, as Fenn himself will tell you, the owner of the land is the automatic owner of the box. There's no place that you can put the treasure that under the right circumstances, there are not complications, Fenn said. Uh, but you can at least assure people they won't get arrested or that they won't get sued and lose the money. Fenn says, I'm not assuring people of anything and admitted, I went out there and hit a treasure chest and they can go get it and that's it. And that's it for me too. <laughs> uh, so where is this beautiful treasure box, treasure chest? Where is it? In the world you know at some point I believe I mean you know how they have metal detectors right now they have to be placed pretty close to the ground but at some point I would imagine that drones will be able to use radar or something you, honestly they can already use radar and see into the ground uh, if somebody really one of these pro teams had a little money backing them. Mm -hmm. That might be the best, I mean, a, a great way to cover a large uh, chunk of territory in one single day. Yeah. Can they be, drones be programmed to fly a specific route without the help of a man? Uh, a yes, they, I mean? yeah, they can absolutely do grid searches. Um, military does that quite often with them. Okay, here's a question. Not the drones that we're thinking, not, not like these little drones. These are drones the size of this table. Okay. When I see the police helicopter in the air, or if I've ever seen, like on TV shows, what the pilots of the helicopters see, uh, they're infrared, aren't they? It's Yeah, it's FLIR. It's forward-looking infrared. Okay, so a human because of the body temperature, uh, gives off a red glow, correct? Actually, in ours, it's black and white, and they give off a white glow. Okay, a white glow. Everything else is black. What would metal give off? Because I I feel, and I don't know, we'd probably have to get a hold of uh, you know, somebody, I'm more of an expert in the field, but I feel like the metal case itself is going to assume... If it's buried in sand, it's going to assume the temperature of the sand it's buried in. Okay. Just because it's metal, it shouldn't get hotter than its surroundings. So very simply put, a helicopter with, what did you call it, seam? FLIR. FLIR uh, would not be able to locate that. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, it's possible that as the, let's just use sand, for example, the sand may cool off more quickly than the metal treasure chest. So there may be a slight difference, but I don't think FLIR is going to locate that. FLIR, for our use at least, is locating maybe uh, 20 degrees warmer than the surroundings. You know what I read that I found really interesting is that in this or on this treasure chest, there is a lock, but it's not locked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He is eccentric. He really is. Yeah. And I think it's really cool that he put a copy of his memoir inside the chest for the person that whoever. Yeah. Do you, Ronnie, here, we're getting to the end of the time that we have for this episode. So, do you think anybody in our lifetime will find this treasure? Um, we got about what? 
15 more years yeah yeah best case scenario right i i would hope so i mean i think technology is going to get better and better mm -hmm. it is already i mean every day there are technological advances and i think technology is what's honestly finally going to find this treasure yeah um it's, and, and perhaps it hasn't even been invented yet yeah yeah not yet but i just think that people stumbling around through desert and what have you boy it's such a long shot um the clues to me are still fairly uh vague so and i don't think anybody has a real somebody may have honestly figured out like a couple of them but nobody has put together all nine clues you know to put i start here and X marks the spot. Cease. Yeah. Cease at the blaze. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to mess with the poem. <laughs> That's out of order. <laughs> <laughs> this whole courtroom is out of order. All right. Um, so how come we haven't heard anything from Forrest Fan? I, you know, I know like you, I, I spend a lot of my week doing research on the man. And in a previous episode, we told you we'd bring you the very latest. And... You know, that's like five years ago. There's nothing. He's not he's not giving out any more clues. Uh, he does very, very infrequent interviews. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? At this point, Ronnie, let's do this. Look into the camera with me here. Mr. Finn, I'm Lou. That's Ronnie right there. We would like to correspond with you, be it through email, text, or comment on our page, mm -hmm. on our YouTube channel. It's uh, the Gallagher Entertainment Network, and the name of the show, Mr. Fan, is Men Are So Smart. Uh, contact us. My email address is lou, L-O-U, at menaresosmart.com. And mine is ronnie, R-O-N-N-I-E, at menaresosmart.com. And as for all of you watching, we would really, really like to hear from you in the comments below. Uh, we respond rather quickly to you. Uh, it is important to us. And in case we haven't said it lately, we really do appreciate that you watch the Absolutely. show. Absolutely, yep. It means a lot to us. All right, you can find us on social media, all of them, at Men Are So Smart. Uh, our website is menaresosmart.com. And you can subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you. Come on aboard. It's kind of like the love boat. Just no boat and, or, and no cruise director. And very little love. Uh, very little love. Yeah, very uh, little. I love you, Ronnie. <laughs> That's about as strong as it gets right there. We'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. Bye-bye.